Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 14. It's prepreg carbon on an aluminum honeycomb core. All the reinforcement here is 200 gram unidirectional grid prepreg, so there's no facing plies and woven. And using a 200 gram glue film, and I'm going to co apply that to the first layer of 200 gram uni that's going to go right up against the core. This is a really easy way to apply glue film without having to worry about pressing it down into the cells of the honeycomb and it gets most of the air out of the interface between the glue film and the carbon. Just so it sticks better, it's nice fillets between the honeycomb cells and the skins. So I've done this before in some of the other videos, but I'm just sticking the carbon down directly onto the glue film, removing the paper backer side first, and then I'm going to cut them out neatly so there's no glue film exposed to get stuck to the vacuum bag, and run the uh, spiky wheel over the plastic backer on the prepreg just to help it the air get out and then I'll give it a quick debulk which is ideally done warm I've got a warm table here it's probably a hundred degrees Fahrenheit it's just warm to the touch enough to make the viscosity of the glue film you know a little runnier so it lets the air out and I've got to do one at a time because I don't have enough room out of the bag. Now I'll give each of these a squish for just a few minutes and that should make everything easier to handle. This is a much loved debulk bag. So now I'll start laying up the actual panel. I've cut the carbon pretty sloppy here but it's just three plies per skin, two what I guess we'll call zeros running the long way with a 90 the short way in the middle and I'm just giving these a quick spike so I can leave the plastic on during the debulk. Ideally you take the plastic off just to get some better um, exposure for the air to come out during the debulk but it works pretty well doing it this way and this is the final ply of that skin with the um, glue film co-applied and so stick that down and leave the paper backer on the glue film because it's super sticky and it will get all over the bag and everything else but just using the spiky roller to perforate that and that was the world's quickest debulk um, you can see it's nice and smooth not much air in there and now I'm gonna stick this aluminum honeycomb on I did not do any prep on the honeycomb some people recommend sanding it, uh, solvent washing. This was a piece of unknown origin that somebody gave me. So it's really just for demonstration purposes. Uh, there's a lot of debate about how best to prepare honeycomb cores. Um, aluminum is a little different than Nomex because it's already sharp. Here's a closer look at it. It's pretty cool stuff. You can see how it was originally compressed when it was made and the L direction the long way the ribbon running across the short way of this piece and I pulled it and over expanded it and to keep the edge of the honeycomb from crushing I'm using some foam strips of about the same thickness that are sacrificial they just go around to make it easier to demold and to keep the bag from pushing the honeycomb in messing up the edges this can be done with wood or aluminum or foam pretty much anything foam is nice because it doesn't hold a lot of moisture and uh, I had some just sitting there I could cut strips off of the tape is really to protect the bag and hold everything in place and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that top skin right on 
there's a little bit of junk in there that I'm gonna have to pull out that I must have got stuck between the glue film and the carbon when I did that first debulk. That is not as nicely stuck together as would be ideal. You can still see some air in there. A longer squish when I co-applied the glue film to the carbon would have been nice and or more heat. But this is really just for demonstration purposes and to get a sense of how this stuff works. I'm going to run the spiky wheel on there and give it another debulk. If you've watched any of these videos before, you've seen me do a lot of vacuum bag putting on and taking off, so I'm going to start cutting that out. And here's the 90 degree ply, trying to make the edges nice. But you can see I did a pretty sloppy job cutting this stuff, and um, it's kind of hanging out all over the edge. It's nice that it should overlap the foam, though, so that it will all be glued together when come time to demold it. And here I'm using some prepreg peel ply. This has been in the freezer for quite some time. It may be out of date. I'm almost certain it's out of date. Uh, it's still a little sticky and I'm just gonna see how it works. The nice thing about prepreg peel ply is that it doesn't bleed as much resin out of the laminate and it gives a nice finish. Uh, but if this stuff is compromised it may be a little gross. So see how that goes and some um, nice perf release film. This is the, the fancy stuff. It's flexible. I think this is P3 perforation. And then just a little bit of breather. Four ounce light breather over everything. Trying not to bleed too much. And just underneath the vacuum a little bit of manifold uh, made out of green infusion flow mesh. So I'm going to put the bag down here. I'm not going to have too much in the way of pleats because I don't really need it. And on a flat panel like this, you can kind of let it stretch. Um, wouldn't necessarily do that in the autoclave, but for vacuum pressure alone, it'll be fine. And I'll give it a squeeze down. And I'm ready to cook. I'm not going to show the cooking process because it's dodgy, but. Here it is, demolded, trimmed, pulling the peel ply off. The peel ply did not look great. I think that it had seen better days and um, probably didn't add anything. And I wasn't super careful pulling it off and pulled off a piece of the uni because there no, there's no woven to protect it. You can really easily grab a strip and just yank it up and there it is, stuck to the peel ply and you can see where it came off. It's one of the hazards of working with unidirectional right on the surface. But it looked really nice, and I cut off a couple of strips of offcuts to break. Just wanted to see how it works. This is um, in the W direction, so the weaker direction of the honeycomb uh, across the direction of the ribbon. So you can see it there. It's bonded pretty well. Uh, to the skins and overall weight nine and three eighths ounces and 267 grams which is of a near what we estimated and I trimmed it up with a router and you can see how the router kind of smudged the edge here uh, it looked a lot nicer where it was cut like this and you can see the little glue fillets in there that have worked their way up the cell walls and that's one of the awesome things about honeycomb besides squishing it and playing with it, is that it really sticks and has got excellent mechanical properties. So that's all there is for that one. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you on the next one.